Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about the brain aneurysm. A brain aneurysm is an artery malformation in which a section of the arterial wall in the brain bulges and fills with blood. It is also known as an intracranial aneurysm or cerebral aneurysm. The bulging aneurysm can put pressure on the nerves or brain tissue. It may also burst or rupture, spilling blood into the surrounding tissue called hemorrhage. If a brain aneurysm bursts or ruptures, it is a life-threatening emergency that can result in a stroke, brain damage, and even death if not treated quickly. This video will explain everything related to brain aneurysis, including its symptoms, when to suspect it, and how to deal with it in the event of cerebral hemorrhage. So our role is to answer most of your questions regarding brain aneurysm. Today, we have Dr. Huang, who is a leading doctor at Pundang Chiseng Hospital. He's going to discuss with us everything about brain aneurysm from an experienced medical point of view. I'm Umi, before we start, please subscribe to our channel so the next time you'll be updated with our new releases. Hello, Dr. Huang. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Can you present yourself to us? I'm a neurosurgeon specializing in cerebrovascular diseases. Most cerebrovascular diseases can be treated through neurosurgery. Of course, the neurology department is in charge of medical treatment, but our neurosurgery department is in charge of surgical treatment. I've been specializing in cerebrovascular disease surgery for about 20 years. Doctor, we will be talking today about a brain aneurysm. Mm. What is exactly brain aneurysm and what causes it? A brain aneurysm is a balloon-like swelling a specific part of a blood vessel in the brain. Swelling mostly occurs in the weak areas of blood vessels, and it commonly happens at the site where the blood vessel splits or branches. In most cases, they form balloon-like shapes, but unusual forms such as fusiform shapes may also be rarely found. Brain aneurysms themselves do not show any symptoms. If the aneurysm is large in size, symptoms may be present due to it pressing on the surrounding nerves. But in most cases, brain aneurysms are discovered when it ruptures, in which the patient becomes unconscious and collapses. Cerebral hemorrhage occurs when it ruptures and results in death or severe disability in two out of three of the cases, making its prognosis very poor. The exact cause of brain aneurysms is unknown. However, based on what has been found through autopsy of deceased patients, there are certain areas in the blood vessels of the brain where no muscle layer is present or certain spots that are structurally weak. It is understood that a combination of hemodynamic factors such as the pressure of blood flowing through such spots leads to aneurysms. So what are some medical examinations done to diagnose this disease? Self-diagnosis is difficult because in most cases, there are no symptoms. It can only be diagnosed through cerebrovascular imaging, such as CT angiography or MR angiography. Such brain imaging studies may not always be accurate, so if any suspicious findings are present, cerebral enneograph should be performed by inserting a thin tube into the artery to confirm the diagnosis. If diagnosed of this disease, what are the surgeries that can be done? And what are the risk factors of this surgery? Unfortunately, there are no medical treatments available for cerebral aneurysms. Only procedures or surgeries are possible. Ruptured and therefore symptomatic cerebral aneurysms always requires treatment. In the case of asymptomatic non-ruptured aneurysms, treatment is performed if its size, location, or shape indicate a high risk of rupture. As for surgery, craniotomy is performed which involves opening the skull and ligating the brain aneurysm with a medical clip. As expected, common complications include brain and vessel injury during surgery, and in some cases, post-operative neurological sequelae may occur as well. It is the oldest treatment method, but in the recent development of procedures, the number of cases being treated with surgery is gradually decreasing. Procedures are endovascular treatment methods which involve assessing the brain through the femoral artery and the aneurysm is typically embolized with a coil. Other methods such as installing spherical implants called webs inside aneurysms are also possible. In the case of fusiform aneurysms, the use of flow-diverting stents 
can be considered as well. Most cerebral aneurysms are treated through procedures nowadays. Procedures are preferred to surgeries by both patients and medical staff, since unlike surgery, it does not require intensive care after operation and the recovery period is relatively short. Since procedures are performed inside blood vessels, complications result due to foreign body reactions caused by the inserted device, which leads to platelet aggregation and blockage of the blood vessel. Other complications include rupture or damage of the aneurysm or blood vessel. It is not absolutely safe compared to surgery, and it should be noted that procedures can also cause complications. Therefore, whether to undergo either a procedure or surgery should be decided after a thorough consultation with medical staff, taking into consideration various factors. So what are some popular methods in treatments of brain aneurysm? Clips used for aneurysms are made out of titanium or titanium alloy, and one or multiple clips may be used depending on the size of the aneurysm. Coils used for endovascular procedures are made out of platinum and are shape memory alloys. This means that they roll up into a spherical shape when placed inside the aneurysm. The size of the first coil is chosen so that it matches the size of the aneurysm as close as possible, and then small coils are inserted afterwards to fill it up. Stent blades used in procedures are made out of a nickel-titanium alloy. All the instruments used in the procedures do not cause any problems in the human body. MRI imaging is possible afterwards as well, and it goes undetected at the search desk before boarding the aircraft. It is impossible to remove the implanted coil later on because it gets buried inside the tissue over time. Since its treatment effect is lost upon removing it, the implant is left inside the vessel, however. This is fine because it won't cause any problems later on anyway. So how often should the patient come and get checkups after the surgery? Checkups are done six months after treatment to determine its effectiveness, followed by a blood vessel test after 18 months. Studies can easily be performed through CT angiography or MR angiography, but if the lesion is too complex or is difficult to evaluate through CT or MRI, cerebral angiography may be required. The patient is then considered to be completely cured if no issues are present after 18 months. And afterwards, follow-up exams are done every three to five years because aneurysms may reoccur. We recommend patients to undergo regular checkups. And what about the likelihood of recurrence of brain aneurysm? Mm. There is no such thing as a complete cure for brain aneurysms. Rather, the goal is to prevent their eventual rupture. The reoccurrence rate is very low in the case of surgical clipping, with the annual reoccurrence rate ranging from 0.26 to 0.53%, if the ligation is properly done. In some cases, it may be necessary to leave a certain part of the brain aneurysm intact. In such cases, an annual reoccurrence rate is about 0.18% is reported. These are all complicated figures, but all you have to know is that it rarely reoccurs. On the other hand, 5 to 30% of reoccurrences can occur following procedures, and most are detected within one to two years after treatment. Reoccurrences of the small cerebral aneurysms are typically rare, but large aneurysms tend to reoccur. The coil blocking the inside of the aneurysm may become compressed as it is continually exposed to high blood pressures, and the weak spot around the treated area may swell up again. But since the purpose of the treatment is to prevent rupture, it's not that all relapses require treatment. If relapses are frequent and there are no changes after the long-term observations, regular checkups without treatment are sufficient, and such cases are relatively common. Even if they do reoccur, there's no need to worry, because not all of them rupture right away, and they typically rupture if it is left untreated for three to five years. So the retreatment is done only if necessary, and through it, we can more than enough prevent ruptures from happening. Okay. So is there a certain lifestyle that should be followed after the surgery? Although the cause of cerebral aneurysms is unclear, a few risk factors associated with the development and rupture of cerebral aneurysms are known. Although there are some genetic predispositions, the most important factor is smoking, which has been known to weaken blood vessels. Other factors include hypertension, which can facilitate the swelling of weak areas in blood vessels, and abuse of drugs such as cocaine and amphetamines. Therefore, quitting smoke and drug abuse and controlling high blood tension through the use of antihypertensives is required. 
In addition to that, lifestyle modifications considered helpful in managing stroke may be useful as well. So, this is this question is about statistics, but do you know how many percent of people develop brain aneurysm each year and how many of these people are completely clear cured? Mm. Each country has its own data, but the most well-described is the U.S. data. Based on U.S. statistics, about 2%. So at least one person among 50 random people could be said to have brain aneurysms. So it's not uncommon at all. However, the actual rupture rate is much lower than that, ranging from 8 to 10 in 100,000 people annually. Korean data results show similar figures, and it's considered that the rupture rate is almost the same across all countries around the world. As I mentioned before, it would be hard for me to give an answer regarding the cure rate, since there is no such thing as a complete cure for brain aneurysms. In Korea, it was reported that approximately 15,000 cases of cerebral aneurysms were treated in 2020. So does alcohol and smoking also affect brain aneurysm? Smoking is an important risk factor, as I mentioned earlier. It has been proven in animal experiments that harmful substances contained in cigarettes weaken blood vessels, facilitating the occurrence of cerebral aneurysms. Quitting smoking is paramount, as it also plays a role in its subsequent rupture. Little is known about the effects of drinking. However, it is recommended to consume an appropriate, otherwise limited amount of alcohol because excessive alcohol intake leads to an increase in calories and has adverse effects on blood vessels. So who is more likely to develop this disease? Is it men or women? It's three times more common in women. We're not exactly sure why. More importantly, there are people who are prone to brain aneurysms. People whose blood vessel tissues are congenitally weak. For example, patients with connective tissue diseases and polycystic kidney disease. Cerebral aneurysms are more likely to occur in these patients because they are born with weak connective tissues. Thus, making the blood vessels structurally weak. In addition, people with cerebrovascular malformations and hemodynamic problems are more likely to develop aneurysms. So patients with connective tissue disease or other conditions that I've mentioned will be more likely to have it. Although brain aneurysms are not a genetic disorder, some sort of family history may be present. So if two or more people within the same family are diagnosed with a brain aneurysm, the whole family should be tested for it as well. Okay. And uh, lastly, how can a person prevent uh, getting this disease? Unfortunately, there are no effective preventative measures. As I mentioned earlier, we recommend that you control the known risk factors, should there be any. One thing to note is that the brain aneurysm may even occur in very healthy people and people who exercise regularly. Even those who have been running marathons until yesterday die or become disabled due to ruptured aneurysms. The biggest problem is that there is no symptoms until it ruptures. So for prevention, patients after the age of 40 should get CTA or MRA checkups every five years to get it treated before it ruptures. Thank you, doctor, for your time. Right. Thank you. So today, the doctor explained in details everything related to this life-threatening condition. Thank you for joining us once again today at Cloud Hospital TV. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and respond to you as soon as possible.